Okay, we, um, we did um, cover a number of issues, but I've tried to boil them down to um, three. Um, the first issue for us on transport was the volume of traffic on the A303. Um, we said this was, uh, as this is a major arterial road, um, it does have um, lots of uh, heavy traffic and one of the problems is around lorries diverting off to smaller routes. Um, and one of the um, outcomes from that, one of the solutions, we thought that um, uh, there could be a lorry watch. Apparently this happens in Bradford-on-Avon, so um, that might be something that could, could happen. Um, someone in our group thought uh, that the volume of traffic, I mean, it does, our, our economy, it does affect the volume. Um, and, you know, if you have some new business, you have a major local industry, you know, and you want to um, encourage new business, you know, that has an effect on the roads and you've got to kind of uh, think about that really. Um, we, one of our group actually was quite concerned about uh, who deals with uh, highway issues, you know, is it the council, is it the highways authority, you know, and I think there needs to be more clarification about, you know, who people go to when there is a problem, there is an issue. Um, we had some discussion about uh, the roundabout. There is a roundabout um, underpass um, and there's concerns about uh, the intimidating sort of way that this underpass, um, you know, people don't want to go to the underpass and how do we make this more user friendly? We need to have it better lit. Um, we also talked about um, local buses, there was a, a big discussion around that, and that once Tesco opened, the bus routes changed, um, that Tesco is running separate buses, um, and they're run with a subsidy, um, so they can choose their own routes, so people aren't getting the bus services that they require, um, and we talked about solutions to that. Uh, there is a hopper bus, of course, but um, we talked about community groups actually maybe looking at how, how can you coordinate the bus routes that exist? Um, can we look at the minibuses? There's lots of minibuses that are run by voluntary schemes. Can we coordinate that? Can we get involved in that? Um, and also, some private companies, um, they run their own subsidised uh, buses for people who need to get backwards and forwards from work. Can there be links there? There are also, uh, we talked about Community Speed Watch, and we talked about the difficulties of uh, retaining volunteers for that, and how, how can we manage that better. Um, there was a scheme running from Amesbury, Shrewton and Bulford. There were eight people involved, but it's now down to five people. And how do you keep people, how do you keep that maintained? Um, there was thought that there needs to be more support, um, maybe through area boards and the community area transport group. Um, and in and the neighbourhood policing teams about how speed watch is publicised um, and how you encourage people to get um, more involved. debate and actually was some quite surprising um, factors came out. <coughs> we started off with um, alcohol issues because we are the fourth highest community area in, in um, Wiltshire and it's felt a lot of criminal damage and other crimes uh, result from that and also with um, 
supermarkets selling cheap booze. Um, drug taking, highest level in Wiltshire, and we initially put that down to the um, high detection rates um, by, by the police officers, but then we had a surprising turn of events on, on the second phase of um, people on our table, and I'll go into that in a minute. Then we went on to domestic abuse because that has um, a significant effect on children and the family. And surprisingly enough, um, we discovered it's not um, primarily alcohol related, but there's been shown to be um, a previous family history um, where, where a child is brought up in a family that does have domestic abuse, then uh, that individual will normally go on to um, be involved in domestic abuse, him or her herself. Um, Antisocial behaviour was felt to be alcohol related, part of pub times, etc. And then we had a couple of subsidiary uh, issues which came out as well. So our priorities, and we had a joint first, um, which was alcohol abuse and drug taking, and I'll talk about drug taking first, because it became clear on from the second group of people we had that it's, it wasn't down to better detection on the part of uh, Wiltshire Constabulary, but actually because we have more drug users in our community than we actually first thought. This has not been an issue for me as a local councillor. I, I've re very, very rarely come across instances of, um, of abuse taking, um, but um, we were given some case histories and it became apparent that it's not just better detection, it's because we've got a real problem in this community. Um, it was felt that we needed uh, better detection, which we've already got, but education, schools education, and we're actually going to be setting up a working group uh, within the local community to look at this um, even further. And that first meeting is going to be taking place on the 19th of March, which is a Monday, 7 o'clock at the Amesbury Baptist Centre. So if there are any residents of Amesbury which would like to attend that meeting, we're going to actually discuss this further. That's not just the only issue. We're actually going to be looking at our other joint first issue, which is alcohol abuse. And as has been reported earlier, it's felt that there is lots of cheap alcohol which is available um, to people. A lot of it's of poor quality, which is sold in supermarkets. We need better leisure facilities, which are not dependent on alcohol, um, for people in that age group from, say, 15 to 30. So that, uh, you know, you don't just go for a pint, you can actually go for a coffee or whatever, pinball machines and whatever. There's a lady there nodding away like a nodding donkey. I'm not sure about that. And um, the education um, and also having uh, targeted referrals so that when there is a lot of that going on, but there needs to be perhaps an even better concentration so that if there is um, individuals who, who are abusing alcohol, they do need to be referred much more uh, positively, perhaps. Our third priority was domestic abuse. Um, this shows up actually in, in, up in schools with um, children and teachers are quite well adept at spotting that. And there are any number of national and local initiatives but we also felt the need to be counselling, perhaps better counselling for military wives, because my understanding is there's going to be 4,000 servicemen going off to Afghanistan um, from this area in the next few months. You know, and let's wonder what's going to happen four to six months after they return. So we think that's a particular issue which needs to be addressed. Finally, antisocial behaviour. Um, a lot of good work has been done in Amesbury with Neighbourhood Watch, with the police, working with councils, working with the public, and we've managed to get the media on board with um, highlighting uh, graffiti, for example. We were able to actually stifle um, graffiti in, in Amesbury over the last few months by really naming and shaming people and pointing out to residents that the council was spending £800 on removing graffiti from walls and that really struck a chord with local people when they found it was hitting their pockets. And also within that, making sure that we've got better youth facilities and again, that's a factor that's come up from uh, other people. So if I can make my plug, um, we've got our, um, 
our um, neighbourhood policing team meeting, and I, I'm the chair of that. And Christian Leia is is um, deeply involved in that. That's going to be on Monday, the 19th of March, seven o'clock at Ainsley Baptist um, Centre, and Ainsley residents are most welcome. Thank you.